Yeah, make some noise. All right. Good job. Okay, you can stop making noise. Who thinks the hot chocolate was amazing? Y'all give Miss Cheryl a big hand for her world famous hot chocolate. Now give all of the other adults who helped Miss Cheryl serve the hot chocolate a big hand. Give them a big hand, too. Yeah. All right. So for your um, Christmas present tonight when you leave, it's not as good as Miss Cheryl's, but we have hot chocolate for you to take with you. Thank you, Bryce. I'll give Bryce a big hand for delivering me my small cup of hot chocolate. Mmm. Good job, Miss Cheryl. Okay, it's not as good as Miss Cheryl's, but we have hot chocolate you can take with you. They're like hot chocolate bombs. You just heat the milk up in the refrigerator, and then you drop these chocolate pieces in it and stir it up, and it turns into delicious, rich, hot chocolate right before your eyes. I said heat it up in the refrigerator. If you can heat up milk in your refrigerator, Something's wrong with your refrigerator. I'm just saying that's a that's an actual problem. Hey, let's see here. My name is Jeremy. If we haven't met yet, I'm the children's pastor here at Central Baptist Church. I think we have some kids who have never been here before. If you're a kid and tonight is your very first, put your hand down. That's not funny. That's annoying. Put your hand down. If you have never been here before, tonight is your very first time. Can I get you to raise your hand? I'm looking out. We have some kids who are here for the very, oh, right here, let's see if I can find a prize in here. Oh, ooh. That's a wonderful prize right there. Let's meet our new friend here for the very first time. What is your name, ma'am? Shelby Nate. Everybody say, what's up, Shelby? <laughs> Shelby, we are so glad you're here. We've got a present for you. That is not edible. That is just squishy, okay? So you can squish it, look at it, but do not eat it really fast. We only have five rules at Kid Central because I hate rules. Rule number one, if a leader is talking, I need you to listen with your whole body. Listening eyes are looking at the speaker. Listening hands are in your lap. Listening feet are on the floor or towards the floor. Listening bottoms are in your chair, slid all the way back. Listening backs are straight Listening ears are not listening to the goofy kid beside you, but instead the goofy adult in front of you. Good job, guys. What's oh, most importantly, listening lips are touching at all times. You guys are good. Not only do we listen to the leaders when they're talking, we also make sure to obey anything the leaders tell us to do. They're not going to tell you to do anything dangerous, painful, or illegal, but they might tell you to stand up. And do four jumping jacks. Spin around eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stand on one leg. <laughs> Stand on the other leg. Stand on no legs. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Good job. We listen to the leaders. We obey the leaders. Number three. No matter what happens, if you get a prize, do not eat your prize. I still have a few straight from 1982 giant candy cane sticks left. Who would like one of these? I'm going to give one out tonight. If you win it, don't unwrap it. Do not eat it. You cannot eat your prize until an adult who is responsible for you, your mom, your grandma, that weird guy across the street, whoever it is that brought you to church tonight, they will be the ones to give you permission to eat your prize if your prize is, in fact, edible. A lot of the prizes we give out are not edible. Don't just assume that your prize is something to eat, okay? That's actually dangerous and could cause you to have to have medical attention. Don't eat squishies, okay? You got it? Even if they look like cupcakes, don't eat squishies. Rule number four, no running. No running in Kid Central. Pastor Jeremy, what if I need to go to the restroom? Walk quickly to the restroom. What if it's an emergency and I can't wait to walk quickly? Well, you should have started walking earlier. You're just going to have an accident. No running in Kid Central. Pastor Jeremy, what if a giant 
um, fire-breathing dragon comes into Kid Central and tries to attack us. Mr. Steve is well-versed in battling giant fire-breathing dragons. He is actually a knight in shining armor. That's why Miss Katie married him. And he will fight the dragon while you calmly and quickly make your way out the back door, okay? Pastor Jeremy, what if there's a fire? First of all, this building is made out of metal and concrete. There's nothing to burn. Second of all, if there's a fire, Miss Sherry, they call her the firewoman. That's her name. She's making her rounds all over town. Sorry, that's not even appropriate. But if there's a fire, she'll put it out while you cough, coughly, carefully and calmly make your way out the door. Rule number five. Rule number five. Don't touch anybody. Don't touch them with your fingers. Don't touch them with your nose. Don't touch them with your elbows. Don't touch them with your toes. No high fives. No sharing seats. No sitting in laps. No arm wrestling. No leg wrestling. No Eskimo kisses. No butterfly kisses. But, everybody say but. If you would like, you could give one gentle fist bump. I feel like he didn't want to give me a fist bump. All right, that's all five rules. Raise your hand if you think you know all of those rules. All right. I need you to follow them. If you do not follow those five rules, I will notice. I will make a mental note, and I will not be able to choose you to win a prize. And my heart will break. But that's what's up. So make sure you pay close attention. Make sure you follow all the rules, okay? Nod your head if you're ready for that. All right. So we first started out talking about the first five books of the Old Testament. We call the first five books the books of the... The books of the law. That's exactly right. And they were all written by one guy, and his name is... His name is Moses. Everybody say Moses. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Let's see if we can say them together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Good job. Uh, the next 12 books of the Bible are called the books of... History. 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 Everybody say history. history. Next 12 books of the Bible are called the books of history. The first one is called Joshua, and it tells us about when Joshua becomes the leader of the nation of Israel. The second book of history is called the book of Judges, and it tells us about the time in the history of God's chosen people, the nation of Israel, when they fell into a circle and they just kept doing the same thing over and over again. They would choose to do things their own way and sin against God. God would allow bad things to happen in their life. They would cry out to God for help and he would send a rescuer. He called them judges to come and rescue them. The judge would rescue them from the problem they were in. Then after he died, the people would choose to sin, do things their own way. God would allow them to have trouble in their life. They would call out to God. He would send a judge to rescue them. The judge would die. They would choose to sin. It just happened over and over and over. That's the book of Judges. Then last week we learned about the book of Ruth. It happened at the same time as the book of Judges. And Ruth, who found herself uh, with a dead husband and no way to take care of herself, needed somebody to help her. And the Bible called that. Does anybody remember the term we learned last week right here in the glasses and the blue shirt? Do you remember? Ruth needed somebody. Boaz ended up being that person. What about you right here, ma'am? A kinsman redeemer. You guys give Sophia a big hand. Let's see if I got a prize in here for Sophia. Oh, that was beautiful. Now y'all give me a big hand. That was amazing. Today we're going to learn about the next book of the Bible. We learned about um, Joshua. We learned about Judges. We'll learn about Ruth. Does anybody know what comes after? Say it out loud. First Samuel. That's exactly right. And I've brought in two theological giants to help you learn three facts about the book of First Samuel. But first, I think it's time for a song, isn't it? So everybody on your feet while our singers make their way to the platform. Let's sing a Christmas song. Christmas, happy Christmas. Sure. All right. Is that what it is? 
Thanksgiving. Did y'all hear that? Oh, we don't have tickets tonight, do we? No. Ooh, I don't know how to choose people. Can't even see the people. Yeah. We'll just play. Me and you. I give you a lot of fake all the time. Pretty good at it myself. I'll let you decide. Okay. I'm going to follow your lead and be submissive. Somebody. This we, we got tickets up here. We could hand them out real quick. Yeah, I'll pass them out. What do you think? Should we do tickets? Yeah. Can I have some help? Yeah, I guess. I hope there's enough. That's all the tickets I see. No ticket, no game. While you're waiting for your ticket, let's talk about Thanksgiving. Is there anybody in here who does not like turkey? Raise your hand if you don't like turkey. Yeah, I don't really care for turkey either. Yeah, I eat ham. Who prefer, raise your hand if you prefer ham over turkey. I like ham over turkey. I like I ham like over turkey. turkey. I don't like turkey, I like ham. How many of you do not eat any Thanksgiving food? Like none of the stuff, cranberry sauce, you don't Very eat turkey, you don't eat ham. You eat chicken, like chicken nuggets from McDonald's, like chicken. That looks like a good place for those. Great, great, great. Well, that's chicken ready. All you right. Chicken, raise your hand. <clears throat> Hold up your ticket if you have one. Keep it up. If your hand's not raised, we might think you don't have one. Tanner, do you have a ticket? Hold it up. Hold up your ticket if you have one. We're almost done. See, we can't draw, we can't draw tickets till you're ready to listen. There's an adult in front of you with a microphone. I think I heard him say you're supposed to be listening with your whole body. Yeah. So if you're currently talking, then that means you're not listening with your whole body. You might be listening with part of your body. Oh, dear. Pastor Jeremy, do you have two tickets stashed in your pocket? Oh, it's too good. Um, yeah, sounds good to me. So we'll just get one up. Wow, you guys are doing it. You can put your hand down now. You're doing amazing. Wow. Raise your hand now if you do not have a ticket. Oh, dear. We have two girls that don't have a ticket. One is new. Tell you what, we need four people to play this game, and we're going to choose those two who did not get a ticket are two of the players automatically. So y'all come right on wow. up. That's yeah, give them a hand. That's fine. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty good deal right Actually, there. stand right there. One of you stand in front of those seats, and you, what's your name? I'll let you draw tickets. Okay. Ticket, everybody. 
And I've got the very special ticket right here in my hand. It is 845. Oh, 845 03. All right, anybody close? 845032. Come on, over here, Sevilla. All right, Miss Katie's getting some new shoes. All right, I don't know if I like that one. Yep, you don't, like, you don't get I'll, to be picky. Okay, eight four five zero one one. All right, come on up. Come over here to see me. All right, so we're going to meet our contestants. What's your name, sir? Graham Crappen. I wasn't sure if Graham had a voice earlier. I'm glad to see he does talk. Everybody give it up for Graham. Give him a hand. Yay. Yeah, Graham. What's your name? Sophia. Sophia. Everybody give it up for Sophia. Woo -hoo. What's your name? Shelby. Shelby what? Shelby. All right, can I call you Shelby? All right, give it up for Shelby, my new friend Shelby here. What's your name? Keely. Keely. Give it up for Keely. So it's come to the point where you have to make a very important decision. You've got to decide who's going to draw the fake piece of paper or the fake fact. Who is the one that you think the fake is just drawn to, that fake fact? So, <laughs> Graham. Graham, I think they're saying you're good at lying. I don't know. So you need to choose. If you think Graham is going to choose the fake, you're going to move your whole body over here. Not yet. Not yet. And if you think Sophia is going to choose the fake, you're going to move your body here in this row or this section. If you think Shelby's going to have the fake, you're going to sit in this section. And if you think Keely's going to have the fake, you're going to sit in this section. And if you're really not sure and don't feel like moving, just stay where you're at. You might win. All right. I want you to choose a new seat. Go, go, go. All right. Oh, it's Shelby's first time here. Everybody say welcome, Shelby. All right. Well, we're going to let her go first. Let's open that piece of paper. We're going to see. You want me to open it or you want to do it? You want me to hold your squishy while you do it? This is cute. You know, they took my picture. And they use that to create this princess squishy right here. Looks just like me. See? It smells like me too. All right, let's read this. Can you read that or you want me to read it? All right, it says, In 1 Samuel, we read about the first two kings of Israel, Saul and David. Do you think that's true? Sounds true. In the book of 1 Samuel, we read about the first two kings of Israel, Saul and David. Now, Pastor Jeremy called us theolo what he call us? theological giants. giants. Now, I got the giant part. Like, I figured that out. That's pretty easy. But I don't know about the theological. I can't even say the word. So, um, But I do feel like this is probably true. I think this book is probably about David and Saul. Don't y'all think so? All right, so you come with me, Shelby. I'm going to get you a prize. I'll let you read one of theirs. Okay, Miss Sophia. I think they're right here. Get you one of these out of here. First Samuel is named after the last judge of Israel. All right, first you go have a seat. Judge, or first Samuel is named after the last judge of Israel. I guess That's a lot I guess of first and true. last in it. Y'all want it to be true? Y'all don't want it to be true, do you? But it is true. It's true. All right. We'll grab you a prize out of there. Sophia. All right. Let's hear what Keely has here. She's opening hers up. She scrunched hers up really good. It's quite crumbled over here. Don't worry, Keely. We're not getting older or anything. All right. Here we go. First Samuel tells us about Israel changing from beginning, 
from being led by judges to being led by kings. First Judges tells us about the time where Israel went from being led by judges, which we've been learning about, to being led by kings. I'm afraid that's true. Go, come here. Oh, come on. Have you got the fake over here? First Samuel is about one of the kids in our church. Uh, first Samuel is about one of the kids in our church. <laughs> Do we even have a Samuel here? Oh, stay seated. If you're not seated, we're not going to give you a prize. Will you pass these out? Uh, you're going to be last. Right. Hey, Graham, I got to tell you what you get to choose from. Baby Yoda's not on the table tonight, sorry. So you can choose any of the blow-ups. Um, you can choose, I think, the ornaments up here, the big ornaments, which y'all got one the other night. Olaf, is Olaf available? Just not Yoda. So a blow-up, an ornament, Olaf, or you can choose a prize out of the bucket. So you don't have to tell us right now. You can think about it and let us know at the end of service, okay? Is that okay? Do you know what you want? What do you want? I want a unicorn. The unicorn. <laughs> I love a man who knows what he wants. All right, so while they're handing out prizes right, to the winning later. team, it's very important. It's very important to remember that this is a big transition in the life of Israel and the whole change in their government. They're going from being led by these judges where they would mess up. God would send a judge to kind of come and save them. And then uh, they would die off and they would live in sin again. Remember that cycle? So then they decided, wait a minute, we need to change things up. And they start looking for a king to solve their problems. So we're going to uh, learn about the beginnings of the kings of Israel. But before that, it looks like Miss Jackie's going to sing. I really don't know. I don't have a thing up here. I mean, I'll sing if you want me to. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah, you should probably go back to your seats. Well, yeah, you can get back, back to your seat. seats, guys. Um, I think one of your songs is "Do You Hear What I Hear This Time of Year." Something, something. I listen to it. We All right, y'all stand up. Oh, the first Noel. First Noel, the angel did say. Was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so
guys have a seat let's pray dear heavenly father thank you for loving us enough that even when we rejected you you would make a way for us to become your children god will you help us hear from you tonight step into this place fill it with your spirit and um, be glorified in your name we pray amen all right, I'm really nervous because this thing is made out of foam and I put that big cup of hot chocolate on top of it. I'm also nervous because I don't know where my Bible is or my notes. That's a little scary. Hey, if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn with me to 2 Samuel. I'm sorry, let's do first, first. You want to? 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter now remember, if you were in Sunday school this morning, if you don't have a Bible, you got a second right now, you could go grab one. Make your way back to your seat. Find 1 Samuel chapter 8. Remember, in Sunday school this morning, we worked on, you guys go get a Bible, you're going to need one. In uh, Sunday school this morning, we worked on using your table of contents, remember that, to find your place in the Bible. 
while I find my Bible, you find your place in the Bible. Second, I mean, First Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8. If you need help finding it, raise your hand, and one of these leaders who loves you so much will help you find First Samuel chapter 8. I don't know. I guess I ate my Bible. First Samuel chapter 8. <clears throat> All right, if you have found 1 Samuel chapter 8, sit still, put your eyes on me, your lips together, big smile on your face. If you have found 1 Samuel chapter 8, if you have not found it and would like some help, raise your hand. One of the leaders is coming to you to help you find 1 Samuel chapter 8. But, everybody say but. No one should be talking right now. Everyone should be in a seat with their eyes on me either holding their Bible open on 1 Samuel chapter 8 or raising their hand so they can get some help finding 1 Samuel chapter 8. Good job. So, when we begin the book of Samuel, God's chosen people, the ones who God chose to show the rest of the world how to have a relationship with him. God's chosen people, the ones that God chose, he said, I'm going to send the Messiah through this family of people. We call them the nation of Israel. We call them the Israelites. We call them the Jewish people. God's chosen people have been living a long time doing what they want to do instead of what God tells them to do. Somebody raise your hand and tell me what it's called when we do things our way instead of God's way. Let's see. Somebody I haven't given a prize in a while. What's it called when we do things God, our way instead of God's way? Sin. Sin, that's exactly right. Everybody say sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin. Who can finish this verse for me? The wages of sin is, hmm, let's see. I need to do this time. That hasn't had a prize in a while. The wages of sin is death. Death. Everybody say, bum, 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 bum. That's what it sounds like when you say words like death. That's the music that should come with it. All right. So when we choose to do things our own way, the Bible says we earn death. Now, that word death there, it can mean for you to be separated from God forever. Uh, right here, Miss Bruja, eyes on me, okay? Thank you. I wore, did y'all see my new Christmas shirt? I went to Walmart and I paid $5.98 for this shirt because <laughs> it's Christmas and it's hot, so I needed a short sleeve Christmas shirt that says, oh, snap, but the gingerbread man is what snap, so I feel bad for him. But in reality, gingerbread men are not alive, so no big deal. The word death, when the Bible says death, here's what it means. An unnatural separation, things being apart that are supposed to be together. Like when you die, your spirit separates from your Bible. When you spend forever being punished from your sin, your spirit is forever separated from God, okay? But what about a Christian? Fisher, what about somebody, Fisher Ellis, what about somebody who has turned away from their sin, the Bible calls that repentance, put their trust in Jesus, they've been forgiven for their sin and adopted into God's family. What if God's people choose to do things their own way instead of God's way. Does that mean because they're Christians that it doesn't matter? They can just live their own way and there's no consequences? Or does Romans 3.23 count for Christians too? Are the wages for sin death all the time? Hmm. Let's take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let me show you some stuff going on in this verse, and then we'll come back 
I mean, in this chapter, and then we'll come back to this idea. Now, let me introduce you. Three main characters. Everybody hold up three fingers. Three main characters in the book of Samuel. Three main characters in the book of Samuel. Book of Samuel tells us about when, when the nation of Israel goes from having judges to having kings. So the first character we meet is the very last judge. He's the last one. Guy after him is the first king. The last judge is the one that the book is named after. Raise your hand if you think you know that dude's name. The book of 1 Samuel is named after him. Raise your hand if you think you know his name. I'll give you a hint. It is not first. Let's see. Right back here. Oh, gosh. I'm so old. How, what's your name? Chloe. Chloe. What is the name of the last judge? What was his name? Samuel, she's so smart. She tried to take both candy cane sticks. That's how smart she is. His name was Samuel. He's the last judge of Israel, okay? He's been serving God since he was a little kid. He's been living in the temple. He's been growing up. He's old now. He's got a long white beard. His back hurts. And his cane is not a candy cane. It's a wooden cane that he uses to walk. He had two sons. They were supposed to be judges after him. But they were sinners. They sinned terribly, so bad that God couldn't use them. And then the nation of Israel looks at Samuel and says, well, let's look at it. Chapter 8. Let me see if I can find my place. This Bible is tiny. Verse 4. Can you guys find that? Second, I mean, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old. Man, that's mean. Don't say that. Behold, thou art old. And thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us. We don't want a judge anymore. We don't want a rescuer sent from God. We want a king. And then look at the rest of verse 5. Like all the nations. They said, hey, Samuel, we don't want you anymore to lead us. We don't want to judge anymore. Instead, we want a human king like all of the other nations. They said, hey, we're looking around at the people who live over here, people who live over here, people who live over here, and they all have a king that rules over them and tells them what to do. And we want to be like them. Now, I want you to point to your brain. I want you to think. All the way back to when God first chose the nation of Israel, they went into captivity. Moses led them out of the nation of Egypt. They had a leader in Moses. But when Moses wanted to know what to do, did he come up with the plan on his own? No. The Israelites have always had a king, but it was never a human. Who was the Israelites' king? Hmm, right over there, blue shirt. That's right, God was their king. They had somebody who was ruling over them who was in charge, who they were supposed to obey and do what he says, and it was God. And they knew that. Fancy word for you, they had a theocracy. That's a kind of government where God is in control. And they were supposed to do what God said. They were supposed to follow the laws that God had. But now they said, Samuel, give us a human king like all the other nations around us. That made Samuel mad. What are you talking about, a human king? You have the greatest king in the universe. You have the creator as your king, and he talks to God about it. And let's check out this conversation between him and God. Man, the print in this Bible is teeny. Hmm... Verse 7, and the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Do you know what the Israelites did? 
They said, we don't want to listen to God anymore. We want you to give us a man, a person, a human, so we can do what he says. They said, we would rather uh, do what a person tells us to do than do what God tells us to do. Why? Because they looked around at everybody else, and that's how everybody else was doing it. They said, we're tired of doing things God's way. We're tired of being the weird ones, Brooklyn. We're tired of being the weird ones who everybody looks at us and says we're different. We want to be like everybody else. We're tired of doing what God says. We want to do what people say we should do so that we can fit in and we can be just like everybody around us. We're tired of doing it God's way. Samuel comes back and he tells them this. Check it out. He says, If you get a king, it's not going to work out like you think it is. You think it's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be happy. Your life's going to be good because you're going to fit in with all of these other nations. But here's what's going to happen. That king is going to love himself more than he loves you. That king is going to tell you, you're going to have to give me some of your money. That king is going to tell you, you're going to have to give me some of your children to come work for me. That king is going to tell you, some of your daughters are going to have to become my wives. Some of your daughters are going to have to become my slaves. That king is going to tell you I'm more important than you are, and you're going to find out that the king who loves himself more than he loves you is going to mess your life up. Now, when Samuel stood up in front of the nation of Israel and told them that, you could have a king if you want, but you have a perfect God who loves you, who wants the best for you, And no human is ever going to feel that way about you. So the people had a choice to make. Do we want a human king like everybody else has? Or are we going to continue to follow God? Raise your hand if you think they said having a human king would be dumb. We don't want a human king. We want to keep God as our king. Raise your hand if you think they said forget you, God. We're going to do things our own way. We're going to pick a human king. Isn't that crazy? That's exactly what they did. Now, think about this. What if you were God's chosen person? You had a personal relationship with God. And instead of living God's way, you looked around and said, everybody else is living a different way. I want to live like them. And God said, if you live like them, it's not going to work out like you think. It's going to be bad. It's going to be hard. It's going to mess you up. And that person said, we don't care, God. We're going to do things like all these other people instead of doing what you say. Raise your hand if that sounds a little crazy, a little dumb. I think so, too. Then I look at my life. And I look at the times that I'm trying to live the way God's telling me to live. And it seems hard because I look at the people who live around me. The people who I see shopping in Walmart, the people I see on TV, and I say, he's not living God's way. And his life sure does look easy. His life sure does look fun. On Wednesday nights, he gets to stay home and watch TV. I got to go to church. On Sunday mornings, he gets to sleep in. I got to wake up and put on a tie. I I have to uh, give some of my money. That guy gets to keep all his money. Me trying to live like God is making my life weird. And people notice that I don't fit in. I imagine what it's like going to school with kids who don't try to live like God. Kids who uh, use ugly language. Kids who say mean things to each other. And you're sitting there and you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to live the way God says to live and it's hard. It's no fun not fitting in. And whether you've ever thought about it or not, you've been tempted just for a couple of minutes to stop doing things God's way and do it like everybody else. If I just tell a little lie to my mom, no big deal. If I just say something hateful to that kid like everybody else, then I'll fit in like everybody else, no big deal. When I get angry, If I try to hurt people like other people try to hurt people, no big deal. I'm a child of God. He's not going to let go of me. I'll still be his. Here's the truth. 
Sin brings death all the time. Sin brings separation all the time. Romans 3.23 is true for everybody. When I choose to do things my own way instead of God's way, guess what? That gets between me and God. Now, I don't stop being God's child. He'll never let go of me. But my relationship with him is not the same. My prayer time is not the same. When I read the Bible, it's not the same. Not only that, you guys know um, my beautiful wife, Miss Cheryl. She made the hot chocolate. Remember that? When I've got sin in my life, it causes separation between me and Miss Cheryl. You know my friend, Mr. Steve? When I got sin in my life, my Christian friends, it's not the same. We're not as close. When I come to church, it feels weird. But just like the nation of Israel, I'm prone. It's very easy for me to choose to do things like everybody else instead of trying to do things the way God tells me to do them. Can I get you guys, close your eyes, bow your head just for a second. You can close your Bible and put it in the seat beside you or under your chair. It seems so crazy to think that the nation of Israel, the whole nation, would say, God, we don't want to do things your way. We want to do things like all the other people are doing them. And we don't care. We want a king like everybody else has. And we don't care about your warning. We're going to ignore that. We're going to do what we want to do, even if it messes everything up. But I bet there's some people sitting in these green chairs right now who have done that. You've chosen to do things your way instead of God's way. Even though you've been warned that sin will hurt you and hurt the people you care about and affect your relationship with God. And right now you're thinking about some stuff you did wrong that you shouldn't have done. First of all, if you're a child of God, he will never, ever let go of you. But if you're not, that sin, you choosing to do things your way instead of God's way, that has earned you a punishment that should last forever. But you could be his child. Tonight, you could be his child. If you'd like to talk to an adult about how you can know God, and be adopted into his family, be forgiven for your sin. Nobody else is looking around. If that's you, I would like for you to stand up right where you are. Nobody else is looking. If you stand up, you're saying, Pastor Jeremy, I would like to talk to an adult about how I can become a child of God. Or maybe you're already a child of God. But there's some sin in your life, some stuff you need to take care of some situation where you've chosen to do things your way instead of God's way. The Bible says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of unrighteousness. What if you were a Christian in this room and you just took that chair right there and used it as an altar, kneeled down in front of it, and talked to God? Hey, God, I, I've been lying to my mom and I know it's wrong and I'm sorry. Hey, God, I, I've been being mean. Hey, God, I, I haven't talk to that girl in school like I know you want me to. Hey, God, I, I haven't been respecting my parents. Hey, God, I, I haven't been worshiping you with a good attitude. Hey, God, I haven't been talking to you every day like I want to. Will you forgive me? I want to do things your way instead of my way. The Bible calls that confession, agreeing with God that that was wrong. When we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to wash it away, and to help us stop doing that. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for every single time that I've chosen to do things my way instead of your way. I'm sorry for the times that I've said these people around me are more important to me than God, and so I'm going to act just like them. God, I'm sorry for the times that I ignored all of your warnings about how dangerous sin is, and I did my own thing. God, will you help me? Will you forgive me? Will you help me to live your way? Because I know that there's no other king I could have that loves me the way you love me. Lord, you proved it on Christmas when you came as a little baby, the king humbling himself to die in my place. 
We love you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Good job. Hey, can I get some adults at that little table behind the soundboard? Hey, guys, my math was wrong. Eyes on me really fast. Lincoln, have a seat. Everybody on your bottom. Fisher, eyes on me. I thought I had enough hot chocolate for everybody, but I'm just a few short, okay? So as you are dismissed, when you hear your name called, when you stop at the prize table, there's some other prizes back there. You get your choice. First come, first serve. But you stay here until your name's called, okay? First come, first serve. You can have the hot chocolate. You can have one of the other prizes back there. Um, And I didn't have enough hot chocolate for everybody. But you may want one of the other prizes anyway, okay? Uh, Second thing I need you to know, all eyes on me. Lips together, William on your bottom, listening with your whole body. Next Sunday is an important day, and they forgot to put it in the announcements, and I'm a little mad about it. When you guys see Pastor Chuck, just give him a thumbs down. Show me your thumbs down. Yeah, he didn't put it in the, in the uh, announcements. Next Sunday is a very important day in the life of every kid in this church. At 10 o'clock Sunday morning, next Sunday, one week from today, we are having... Oh, good job. Y'all make some noise for Bomb Diggity. That's going to be good. All right. Now, check it out. <clears throat> Bomb Diggity. I'm going to have every one of these inflatables there, plus I'm going to buy a couple more. And Bomb Diggity, we're not giving away one inflatable. We're not giving away two inflatables. We're giving away three inflatables. A Christmas present for every kid that comes. Plenty of games. The... Salt and Light Teen Worship Band will be leading us in worship. And your favorite children's preacher, Jeremy Autry, will be bringing the message. It's going to be good. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, 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 okay. Stop, stop, stop. 10 o'clock Sunday morning next week. You can go to Sunday School in the Children's Building. Bomb Diggity will be, Bomb Diggity will be, Bomb Diggity will be in the student center. We'll be taking over the teens' worship space. It's going to be beautiful. Huh? Oh. No, no. You just needed this one. That one doesn't have batteries. Oh. The power might be off on that one. Here you go, Katie. Trade me. I'll fix it. I know. Oh, you got it. Go ahead. All right. I think that's all I got to say. You guys have a seat. Listen for your name closely. Some music will be playing, but we'll make it quiet. You stay in your seat until you hear your name. If you are a fifth grade boy, I would like for you to take up Bibles for me. Fifth grade boy. Lorenzo. And adults, we have to take down the adults, we have to take down the decorations today because we don't have good news clubs.